Okay, good morning. This is Mark coming to you from Baker's Green Acres. And uh, yesterday, you know, I, I promised that I would get back to the whiteboard and talk to you about a bucket, right? Look at this. There's Miss Fawn. And that was just the, you know, the title. That was the title of it. Um, but really, we're talking about the equipment necessary to milk and then handle that milk, you know? I mean, it could be as simple as a bucket and just your hands, but it can be as elaborate as a, a plumbed-in system, and that would mean a permanent system where you hook your, your cow up to, or cows, and it goes through, uh, you know, they have filtration, they have uh, cooling systems and everything. They, they get pretty elaborate. But if you're like me and you're only only have two cows I just have her and Rose that's in there getting milked I don't need that and so I don't want to be any more complex than I need to be my goal in this is just a glass of milk now and again uh, some cream all the butter we need and a lot of cheese that's my goal and so I don't really need a very elaborate system but I want to back up and talk feed just because what I'm about to show you, I may not be able to show you in a day or two because we're supposed to get some heavy snowfall. And here we are, the 20th of December, and we have zero, almost zero snow on the ground. Mostly all of it's melted off. We've had some beautiful days, which is nice. But I want to show you this field, and for people that have been with my channel for a while, we've had pigs out on this field. At one time, there was six or eight porta huts out on this field and we farrowed right out here um, when I bought this place this was sand it was literally sand um, and it was used as what they call a dry lot so when the cows were well they milked them in there at the time and well that's where the they would lay around they called that the loafing shed so the the cows would lay in there during the day. They milked them twice a day. This cow, this farm had 10 cows. It was about a 10 cow operation. And then they'd open the gate and they'd go through and they milked them underneath um, the hay mow. And then they would kick hay off the hay mow to their feed troughs. And this was, you know, at a time when I think they had more snow for global warming and everything, of course. So they did mostly everything inside. But it was their system of milking. It was their system good thing but this out here would be where the cows would just stand around I guess but when we got here it was sand I mean my kids played out here with Tonka trucks and if you look at it now it's not sand this is very very good soil but it wasn't just from having cows out here um, I wound up putting pigs out here and then the fertility came up a little bit and I planted some rye a friend of mine showed me how to use some of the equipment that was here when I got here. I planted some rye. It came up. Pigs ate it down. I did it again. It came up. They ate it down. Um, so we're looking at over 10 years of, <clears throat> of working with this field. But what I'm using it for now, and I think this is what I'm going to settle on, is a field that I can plant forages just for milk cows. <clears throat> so I planted this with rye in September, maybe end of August. I don't remember exactly, but it was right around there. And it got up to be about a foot high, and it was beautiful, just beautiful. You can see you can, there's even some rows there. And when we brought them in December 1st off the field, um, I put them on here and there was still snow on here but they went down through it and they've eaten it as close as they can get it right they're still fooling around with it but and then I got a hay feeder out here too a round bale feeder and there's another one up there but we're expecting to go into winter mode here anytime and really the cows what they do is they just eat lay in the loaf and shed get milked eat lay in you know it's just that they don't have a very exciting life no TVs here for them but this field, I'm showing you this now because this is really cool. 
Um, this is going to get covered with snow, and I'm glad for that because then they won't be able to eat it down any closer than they have. And when spring comes along, I won't let them down here. Um, they're just going to be restricted to their dry hay for a while. And when we start getting those warm days in the spring, I can just think of it now. You know, it's warm, longer days, sunshine. You're thinking about going swimming. This grass is going to enjoy it just as much, and this is rye grass. <clears throat> Real cheap to plant, very nutritious. It, it brings nutrients from the soil up quickly, and then they can utilize it very quickly. So rye, I can't say enough about rye for this type of activity. So when this gets up to be about a foot, and this will be end of May, I start cutting hay in June. So I would not want my cows out on the field in June because I haven't cut the hay off yet. And it's still kind of wet here from, from all the snow that's melted. Um, I could turn them in here and there would be a month's worth of feed in here. And it would be really good stuff, really good stuff. So this field, all, you know, it's an acre field and it was really, really ugly, nominal property. Now it's turned into a real asset because I can get, well, I had four good size animals out here, five actually, if you count that horse, and for 30 days. So do the math on that, how many cow days that is. That's a lot, it's a lot, and it saved me a, a pile of money. Plus I'm increasing the fertility of this all the time. Anything we do, there's gonna be residual effects and uh, sometimes you do some farm function, some homestead function, and the residual effect is you won't sleep for two days. Well, I stay away from those things. I like to do the things where the residual effect is really good. So look at the residual effect out here. You see all those dark spots? Those are all cow bombs. And they provide this little world you know there's a little world there we we watched horton here's a who last night right but there's a little world there and all those bacteria that came out of the cow or the horse's gut is now back to the earth and then there's a process where it it really goes back to the to the dust you know and becomes food for for something else. Well, the bacteria in the soil doesn't become food, but the bacteria in the soil is able to take whatever we throw at it and turn it into nutrient. And then that nutrient comes back through the grass. And we have, you know, a symbiotic relationship with the sun. And today we're getting rain on it, which I'm really liking because there's a lot of nutrient in rain that's not in, in irrigation water out of the well, let's say. But uh, irrigation water out of the pond is really, really beneficial. But yeah, I wanted to show this because I won't be able to show it. So I've gotten, you know, if you do the math on it, I've gotten 30 days out of this. Almost, let's see, it's 20th. So it's say 20 times 5. I've gotten 100 cow days out of this. And I did feed some, some dry hay. So that's good. And I'm going to get that twice on this feeding. So that's, that's really decent, I mean, for what I have into it. And the process all along the way is going to increase this piece of property instead of decreasing it. I mean, sand is nice for playing with Tonka trucks, but it's really not nice to, to grow things in. And I'm here to tell you, you can go from blow sand, is what they call it around here, to nice fertile dark soil like this i don't know if you can really see it but you can see something has grown on it and this rye when it comes back up is just bright green and it's really beautiful to see i really really like it okay so that's a little off topic for today i want to get to the whiteboard and talk about buckets and milking systems i might but i'm not going to make any promises it's mark from baker's green acres remember anyone can farm